traditions define the Thanksgiving holiday. From the meal of turkey and mashed potatoes, followed by a slice of pumpkin pie, to the family gathering around the TV to watch the Macy's Day Parade, Miracle on 34th Street, Charlie Brown, or NFL football. Time I'm gonna kick that football clear to the moon! And my personal favorite, the National Dog Show. Welcome back. It all comes down to this. Record number of entries today here at the National Dog Show presented by Purina. The National Dog Show is a newer tradition for many, starting in 2002, but has since become a holiday classic, working its way into over 20 million homes every Thanksgiving. You made it sound like the Terrier was a sure thing. You said she was majestic. They're all majestic. This is a nationally televised dog show. This is the big time. The inspiration for this canine competition is a bit unique. In an article in Philadelphia Magazine, NBC Sports Programming President John Miller says he conceived the idea for the National Dog Show after he and his wife made it a blockbuster night and rented the hilarious mockumentary Best in Show, which recently celebrated its 20th anniversary. Some big and some are small, some really small. Bushy coats and coats so silky they look like they were spun by a giant spider. You Best in Show has always been one of my favorite comedies, one that I always associate with the Thanksgiving holiday, in part because of the competition it inspired, but also because the film reminds me of my family and the countless laughs and inside jokes this comedy has provided us. Christopher Guest was no stranger to mockumentary comedies when he conceived the idea for Best in Show along with his writing partner, Eugene Levy. Guest had already helped write and starred in This Is Spinal Tap, a film that satirizes rock bands and concert films of the 70s, and essentially kick-started the mockumentary format. Very delicate. It's a, it's a bit of a departure from the kind of thing you normally play. Yeah, well, it's part of a, uh, a trilogy, really, a musical trilogy that I'm doing in D minor, which I always find is really the saddest of all keys, really. I don't know why, but it makes people weep instantly. Mockumentaries were so new at the time, audiences believed they were watching a documentary about a real band. Guest then went on to make Waiting for Guffman, another mockumentary. This one about the production of a small stage musical in a rural Missouri town. Guffman is where Guest really began to develop his deadpan comedic style and assembled his cast of regulars that he would frequently partner with in the future. Guffman is a great film with a ton of laughs, although slightly less polished than Best in Show. I think the uh, one really important thing that I learned in working with Corky is that I do indeed have talent. The previous films that Guest and his ensemble made together get a lot of things right and are classics in their own rights. But Best in Show is his best film, thanks to the execution of three key elements. The ability to craft memorable characters that you both can laugh at and root for, the cast's incredible use of improvisation, and the creator's influential use of the mockumentary style of filmmaking. I want to explore these key elements and how they help to make Best in Show such a successful and influential comedy. She has really given him a thorough going over. Are all judges that thorough? I mean, yes, she looks yes. at the teeth. It's very important that all the attributes are examined. Uh, teeth, eyes, Runs ears, Ouch. gums. Am I seeing right? Where's she putting her hands now? Uh, she's just checking out the dog's uh, testicular area oh. to make sure. Best in Show follows the owners of five dogs as they travel and compete at the Mayflower Dog Show in Philadelphia. Each competitor has their quirks and foibles, but there is also a genuineness, a kindness in a lot of them that makes you root for them. There's Jerry and Cookie Fleck, a middle-class couple from Florida with their terrier Winky. They are played wonderfully by Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara. The audience watches in agony as Cookie and the affable Jerry run into several of Cookie's former paramours along their journey. And, and she was there with somebody else. She was very popular back then. She had dozens of boyfriends. Hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah, hundreds. I did not know that. <laughs> hundreds. Christopher Guest himself plays the modest and lonely southerner Harlan Pepper, who's competing with his young bloodhound, Hubert. I mean, he, you can't find a better dog on the whole planet Earth. 
and I would guess that even if one day they land on some other planet in Venus or Mars, they have, you, you couldn't find a better dog. There's the young yuppie couple Meg and Hamilton Swan, played by Parker Posey and Michael Hitchcock. They are a neurotic and anxious couple, and those tendencies are wearing off on their Weimaraner Beatrice. We met at Starbucks. Not at the same Starbucks, but we saw each other at different Starbucks across the street mm -hmm. from each other. And Hamilton got up the courage to walk across the street one day and approached me. Yeah. I'd seen you at law school before. Yeah. And I know that sometimes I'd be in one Starbucks and then you'd be in the other Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And then I think maybe, you know, I should go over to that Starbucks next mm -hmm. the next weekend and then you'd be at the other Starbucks. So we kind of crossed. <laughs> Guest Spinal Tap co-star Michael McKean and John Michael Higgins play Stefan and Scott, a glamorous and fun gay couple. And uh, I asked my ex-wife, who's that? She says, that's Scott. He, he, he shows a good dog. <laughs> I've never seen anyone as light on his feet as Light as in the loafers. Scott here. Say it. No, 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 Oh, no. no. What Stop. A super, oh, no. Wait no. till I tell mom. It's just he and the Borzoi seem to, be, seem to have the same prance, the same. It was like they were two members of the same body. You might say, and it was it was a wonderful. Sight I to knew see. a guy who had two members on the same will body. You stop and it? They're confident that their Shih Tzu, Miss Agnes, will be able to take down the favorite to win the competition. Standard Poodle, Rhapsody in White, owned by the very old and very rich Leslie Ward Cobbett, and his trophy wife Sherry Ann. Yeah, we both have so much in common. We both love soup, and uh, we love the outdoors. Uh, we love snow peas and uh, talking and not talking. Uh, we could not talk or talk forever and still find things to not talk about. Sherry has hired the super competitive Christy Cummings to handle Rhapsody at the competition. And we have our, a little bit of a family dynamic going here, and it pretty much mirrors what I grew up with. You know, my uh, my father was the uh, the uh, taskmaster, the which is the disciplinarian, which is what I do. I'm the mommy slash daddy. That's right. Like Mr. Punishment. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, you know, and also reward. Mm -hmm. But um, Sherry's responsible for the unconditional love. You know, just and the decorative uh, abilities. Exactly, the heart and the soul. You know, mm -hmm. which is what my mother did, and that was her job. You know, she was there for the unconditional love. Mm. And it worked for my family, you know, until my mom committed suicide in 81. Mm. Christopher Guest's comedies, and Best in Show in particular, focus on the comedy that is found in the world around us, the small absurdities of people in everyday life. Best in Show's cast is stellar. This is the second film that the core cast had worked on together, and their chemistry is evident in the way that they're able to play off of each other. Well, he's, he's a I'm very talented young man. You, you must stitches. be very proud, Mary. <laughs> proud Mary. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Who are you all of a sudden? Good baby boomer guy. Good heavens. <laughs> Good heavens. Mr. Hep. The actors play the characters straight, no matter how absurd the situation that surrounds them becomes, and that is where a majority of the comedy comes from. Guess and his cast are able to find the humor in every character, in every situation, no matter how mundane. Um, I'm looking for a, um, a, a, a toy. A toy. It's, it's a bumblebee. It's for, like a. Um, um, for what kind of animal? Is it? For a dog. It's, it's a bee. It's a bumblebee. And it's furry. It's about this big. Okay. Right? It's, it's, a, um, it's a bumblebee. Stripes on it. Here it is? Is this it? No, that's the bear in a, in a bee costume. Okay. Every character gets their chance to shine, whether it's in interview segments or events leading up to and during the dog show. What's with the little plumber butt thing happening on the, the hip? These pom-poms are keeping um, Butch's hips warm from the cold water. The hip joints is very important. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the little drummerette things you were saying on that? Uh, right, though. We Those keep act the... as flippers. Uh. Right. Uh -huh. Most of the actors are acting in couplets, which gives them ample opportunity to riff off of each other. Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara's chemistry is, is standout. The two had a long working relationship prior to this film, and it continues to this day with Schitt's Creek. They are natural together. It really shines in the scenes where they sing together. 
Yes, he does. God loves a terrier. That's because small, sturdy, bright, and true. They give their love to you. God didn't miss a stitch. Be it dog or be it bitch. When he made the Norwich merrier with its cute little terrier. Yes, God loves a terrier. Their down-to-earth portrayal of Jerry and Cookie becomes the emotional heart of the story. On the opposite side of that coin, you have the characters of Scott and Stefan. Their portrayals are very much over the top and can come off as a narrow character of the gay community. However, as Brett White points out in a September 29th article on Decider, today you realize that Scott and Stefan aren't just a silly, over-the-top gay couple. They're a real couple, the most well-adjusted and supportive one in the entire film. We'll, we'll be home tomorrow. I just wanted to say goodnight. I'm sing a little bit of your favorite song, okay? They buried Barbara in the old churchyard. They buried William beside her, and from his grave grew a red, red rose, and out of hers a briar. Good night. Don't stay up all night watching old movies. <laughs> Christopher Guest's Harlan Pepper is the only character traveling to the dog show alone. As he drives to the show and his camper, he talks relentlessly to the camera, to his dog, Hubert. Guest decided to make Harlan a practicing ventriloquist, which further illustrates his loneliness. Hey, hey, what you doing, bloodhound doggy? That's an easy one to say, bloodhound, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You gonna see? You can't talk about Best in Show without mentioning the outlandish performance of the late Fred Willard. Fred doesn't appear until about the midway point as the Mayflower Dog Show's color commentator, Buck Laughlin. It isn't stated outright, but you get the impression from Fred's performance that Buck is a former athlete who takes any job that comes his way. His obliviousness to the rules and etiquette gives us a hilarious outsider's perspective to the dog show world. That's my favorite, the miniature schnauzer. How do they make a miniature? I mean, is there some way, some process they... They physically miniaturize the dog, or is it a puppy, or what? What the devil is going on? They're just they're just breeding. I mean, that's breed, a, they that breed them the small. Of, the You'd think the, they'd want to breed them bigger, wouldn't you? Like grapefruits or watermelons. In the well. Ringer September 29th oral history of Best in Show, actor Bob Balaban called Fred's performance one of the longest, best, funnest improvised things I've ever encountered in a movie. Uh, Mayflower. Uh, combined with Philadelphia. No brainer, right? Because this is where the Mayflower landed. Not so. It turns out Columbus actually set foot somewhere down in the West Indies. Little known fact. How does the name uh, Mayflower get up to the Quaker City? Well, it wasn't actually Columbus, uh, the Mayflower, as uh -huh. you probably remember. And, uh, and he, he did land in Plymouth Rock. Well, they landed several places because there's the no. Nina, the Pinta. Uh, the there are a couple Santa of them. They, they all landed in different places. Well, but not really. The, the, well, I'm not the historian. Let the people in the uh, production booth right. deal it, with it that one. Matter. It really, really matter. Even with some of the broader characters, like the yuppie swans or Stefan and Scott, the portrayals lack a maliciousness that can be found in other movies of this sort. Each actor seems to have found an emotional center for their characters and portrays them with an earnestness that shows through. Best in show, like Waiting for Guffman and This is Spinal Tap, is heavily improvised. They use a technique called retroscripting, where characters' descriptions, plots, and scenes are outlined, but the dialogue is left to be improvised by the actors. The actors have no rehearsal time, and the ensemble improvises scenes while filming them. You have to have incredible chemistry to pull something like this off. You have to know your scene partner deeply. There are some prime examples of improvisation all throughout Best in Show. Please, honey, this is what I do. Don't be mad at him, please. I'll gouge your left eye out with my oh, thumb. I shit you not, you freak. I'm gonna you get down here right no, now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch him in the eye wait, till it turns to jelly. Down. Down. Get down don't here. Don't look at him in the eye. I don't challenge him. He doesn't like it. Stab you with forks until you bleed. How about that? In the Ringer's oral history, Guest likens the cast chemistry to that of members in a band. I look at this as a band and with great musicians. 
I mean, everyone has to be able to hold up their part, and they're playing rhythm sometimes, and sometimes they're taking solos. But you cannot have a weak link in that, because the whole thing falls apart. The use of improv adds an element of realism to guest films. It enhances the documentary feel of the film, because it feels as if you're watching events and conversations unfold for the first time in front of you. The influence of guest improv technique can be seen today in shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm, The League, and even some films of the mumblecore genre. In his movies, you got to know your character, you got to know what they're doing, what their background is, what they're trying to accomplish. I hate to sound like one of these serious actors, uh, <clears throat> but when you're improvising, you can't just suddenly say, pull something out of left field. It's got to be in character. Guest's straightforward approach to characters and the use of improvisation lends itself to the mockumentary format. Many documentaries fall into the category of cinema verite, which is meant to convey candid realism without direction or manipulation. These films follow people through the mundane, everyday moments and are able to find humor, whether intentional or not. Think of films from Albert and David Maisel's, like the rock documentary Gimme Shelter or Grey Gardens. And then you can pull the stockings up over the pants underneath the skirt. Mm -hmm. And you can always take off the skirt and use it as a cape. So I think this is the best costume for the day. <laughs> the cinema verite style can also be seen in aspects of reality television, like the popular reality competition shows Survivor and Big Brother. Then there's shows like Keeping Up with the Kardashians and the Real Housewives series which give the appearance of cinema verite, but actually probably have more in common with guest mockumentaries. While maintaining elements of documentary, a lot of modern reality shows have producers who manufacture conflict and scenarios for the reality stars to react to. It's sort of like retro scripting. Watching Best in Show today, it almost plays out like a parody of the numerous reality shows on television right now. We have become obsessed with living vicariously through others, watching them fight, fall in love, compete, and accomplish their hopes and dreams, no matter how small. Best in Show knows this and celebrates it. Best in Show's mockumentary style has also been a huge influence on several popular comedy series. NBC's The Office, Parks and Recreation, and ABC's Modern Family all employ the mockumentary element. Ricky Gervais, who created the British version of The Office, named Guest as a direct influence to his series. And while these shows don't use total improvisation, they often allow for improvised takes and give the appearance of being unscripted. The characters of these shows also work closely with actors to form more interesting and nuanced characters. Nick Offerman was able to make Ron Swanson into the sort of mythical character that he is by adding in elements of his own life. Just give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Wait, wait. I worry what you just heard was, give me a lot of bacon and eggs. What I said was, give me all the bacon and eggs you have. This creation of memorable characters that audiences care about is what really makes the mockumentary right, work. Dear. Since its release in 2001, Best in Show has become a cult classic, endlessly quotable and perfectly crafted. I used to be able to name every nut that there was. And that used to drive my mother crazy because she used to say, Harlan Pepper, if you don't stop naming nuts. And the joke was, of course, that we lived in Pine Nut. And I think that's what put it in my head at that, at that point. So I'd go to sleep. She'd hear me in the other room and she would just start yelling. I say, Peanut, Hazelnut, Cashew Nut. Macadamia nut. That was the one that was sent her <laughs> into a, going crazy. It helped inspire numerous mockumentary style films and television shows over the last couple decades. The Office, Parks and Rec, and What We Do in the Shadows, none of these would exist today without the heavy influence of Best in Show. Christopher Guest and his ensemble created lovable characters that you care about and root for, all the while laughing at. And that really is the key to making the mockumentary work. The cast's brilliant chemistry and improvisation in place of dialogue has also been influential to shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm, The League, and the mumblecore genre, showing that improvisation can allow for genuine reactions and realistic drama. Together, these elements make this Christopher Guest film best in show. <laughs>